The first fire extinguisher on record was in Europe in the Middle Ages. It worked like a giant syringe used to squirt water at a fire. The modern extinguisher uses compressed air as a propellant. The fire dowsing substance is either water or a chemical liquid, powder, or foam. Squeezing the lever opens a valve that releases compressed air. The pressure propels a chemical through the hose and out the nozzle. To make the release valve, they start with cylindrical pieces of aluminum, called blanks. A carousel runs each one through 16 different machining stations. At each stop, under a shower of lubricant, tools shape the blank for six and a half seconds. As each blank completes the circuit, it comes off the carousel. From blank to valve in a minute and a quarter. Now they rivet the fire extinguisher's aluminum handle onto the valve. It pivots on a pin. Next, they rivet an aluminum lever onto the handle. This is the lever you squeeze to use the fire extinguisher. Then comes the valve stem, the valve's inner workings. Workers simply place it inside and an automated assembly machine does the rest. It positions a spring over the stem to create resistance when you squeeze the lever. Then a retainer to hold both the stem and spring in position. Now workers slip on a plastic thimble to position the rubber o-ring that goes on next. The o-ring acts as a seal between the valve and cylinder, so nothing leaks out. The siphon tube runs from the valve down into the cylinder. The firefighting chemical goes up this tube, then out the nozzle. The compressed air inside the cylinder is what propels the chemical. This gauge shows if the pressure is sufficient for this to happen. After coating the gauge's threaded stem with sealant to prevent leaks, they screw it onto the valve. The valve unit is now fully assembled, tested, and ready for installation on top of the cylinder. To attach it, the cylinder needs a threaded collar. With the help of a press, a worker positions it. The cylinder also needs a bottom. The technique the factory uses to permanently fuse the bottom and collar is called brazing. It's similar to soldering, but with a copper ring as a bonding metal. After positioning a brazing ring at the base of the open cylinder, they press in a steel bottom. Then they position a brazing ring over the collar. Now into a brazing furnace for an hour and 45 minutes. The heat, 1100 degrees Celsius, melts the two copper rings, bonding the parts they connect. Next stop, the static paint booth, where they run a positive electrical charge to the paint particles and a negative charge to the cylinders. This draws the paint onto the surface evenly. Then it's into an oven for 45 minutes to bake the paint. Once the cylinders cool, automated machinery fills them with a fire extinguishing powder. The main ingredient is a form of ammonia. When you spray it on a fire, the heat melts the particles, fusing them into an oxygen blocking blanket that smothers the flames. After filling, an automated machine screws a valve onto the collar of each cylinder. Now it's time to pressurize the cylinder. They squeeze the lever to open the valve, enabling a compressor to fill the cylinder with air. They keep filling until the air pressure is 13 bars, about six times the pressure in a car tire. Next, they screw on the nozzle and install a locking pin. This immobilizes the lever, so the extinguisher can't discharge accidentally. As the instruction sticker says, in case of fire, you just pull the pin, aim, and spray. This mounting bracket lets you hang the fire extinguisher in an accessible spot, so it's close at hand if you need it.